This guy was a hockey player, and he's now a traveling member of the media. How about that? Our Ooh. friend Andrew Raycroft with us on the Harbor Ooh. One Hotline. Look where, at you making where, all the towns. Where are you at now, Razor? Where, what city are you uh, in right now? No, no, I'm back at home. But, yes, I did make a, uh, a guest appearance on the last road trip. Two nights in New York City. I need a month off to recover. <laughs> really? <laughs> Wait, New York City, was this last weekend during, like, Thanksgiving after the parade and everything like that? All the hecticness that yes, went on in that sir. city? Yes, it was chaos in the city. More chaos than usual. So, uh, yeah, it was it was nice to... Nice to fly charter again and hang out with the guys. It was uh, brought me back to my days. Ooh, what is the best part of the charter flight for Andrew Raycroft? Uh, just walking right on the plane, off the oh, bus, yeah. right onto the plane. Not like no security. Not the best. That's Do you best. feel like uh, guilty? Like when you have all that extra free time because you're not a player, so you can little roam the streets. You can go out to dinner. You can do whatever you want. Like and you have to be like, oh, honey, we're working our ass off over here. Get, get a little electric. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it is wild how much time like there is. Just a bunch of wasted time just to hang out and walk around. They were afternoon games, so that kind of threw a bit of a wrinkle into it, right? You know, it's it, it filled the morning, but. But, yeah, it's it's wild when you're not a player how easy a road trip is. Do the players let you hang out? Like, if they go out for a group dinner, are you accepted into that group? Like, oh, are you? No. Or they completely cut you off because you're media? No, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even ask what they were doing. You know, I, I, if I saw the guy, I saw the guys at the restaurant. I went over and said hi or whatever. But, no, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't include myself. I'm not delusional to think that I am nothing but a media slug at wow. this point so it changes They're quick nice doesn't it changes it does. quick they're nice to me but it changes quick yeah no <laughs> they all stop talking that. life when comes you show at, up life comes at you fast <laughs> when you become a former player oh. in the media well we won't get into dad trips or you know some organizations they canceled the mom's trips but let's get oh, to the boy. bruins <laughs> who uh won three nothing last night razor and uh i get it it's san jose they stink but, boy, did the Bruins need a get-right game, and it feels like they got one last night, or did you see it a little differently? No, I, it was a get-right game, no question. And, and yeah, San Jose stinks. Um, so it, it fit perfectly in their schedule after playing so poorly on the road trip. But I think you look at the first period, they didn't try and blow them out in the first period. They didn't try and score five goals. They stayed very conservative last night, allowed the game to come to them, but no odd man rushes. No two-on-ones, no giveaways at the blue line. So it, it looked much better, and it was a good uh, appetizer for the, the main event, which is tomorrow night in Toronto. So, you know, they lose three in a row, and they're outscored 17-8 to eight in those three losses. And obviously you, you thought the, uh, the San Jose was bad, and you know, Columbus is just, I mean, just as bad. But they lose to them, and then they come back. Curious. Um, cause I think a lot of people felt like the sky was falling and like the goalies are going in and out and nothing was working. And do we expect too much from this team based on what they have accomplished last year and how well they started? Yeah, no question. Cause this, this will happen again this season. They, they're going to lose a few games in a row again. I think this hasn't happened to this team, like you said, in 18 months. So you kind of forget what it feels like in the national hockey league to have a really hard week. The reality is they had a really, really difficult week last week, and every team gets them. It just happened. It was over. The Bruins got back from Florida off a dad's trip at like 3.30 in the morning. Then they had to get up and do Thanksgiving with all the in-laws and whoever was in their house for the weekend because they were going on the road. So the wives and girlfriends' families are all in town. Then they play two matinee games and then a game in Columbus where you're just trying to get home and get back to reality. And within all of that, all they had was one pregame skate from Monday to Monday. So just a really difficult week. I think you can over – we, there was some over-exaggeration because, again, I think they're going to lose three in a row at some point again this season, whether it's regulation losses or shootout losses. That's just the, the nature of the league. And, and, yes, we've been spoiled, or especially as analysts, uh, over the last year and a half at how good this team has been. Andrew Raycroft, Razor, who is, of course, a part of the crew on Nesson. He's with us here at EEI, and he joins us on the Harbor One Hotline. I know Jim Montgomery is a line shuffler, but specific to last night, Razor, 
What did Jim Montgomery do that you liked? Was there anything that, I don't want to call it out of the ordinary, but was there a combination, whether by chance, by accident, whatever, that there was a line combo that you liked that maybe Monty might have stumbled on? Well, my only my criticism would have been, is that I thought they should have done that in Columbus or or even in New York. Once it started getting off the rails, I thought they sh- that he should have changed the lines up a little bit. I think the the bottom and and I also saw and the things I liked about it was one he kept the coil line together and the Beecher line together because I think they've been really good and you didn't really want to mess with that. Or I didn't think you wanted to, them to do that. So I liked both of those things and then getting DeBrusque on the top line, getting Jake DeBrusque more involved in the offense. He's playing a good 200-foot game, but at the end of the day, he's got to score for you. He's, got, he's a better player when he's involved offensively. He needed to get out there in more offensive draws, more offensive situations with David Pasternak. So I really like that. And then with Patra and Heinen and Marshawn, it's a really good little combo. Patra hasn't been great. I thought last night was his best game maybe all season. He did a great job holding on to pucks and possessing pucks, and I think that comfort of playing with Marshawn and Heinen allowed him to do that. So I, I, my, the criticism for me is I thought he should have moved to these lines prior to Columbus, if not in New York. You mentioned Danton Heinen, and we had somebody even in our Twitch chat say, there are times where I look at him and think, damn, this guy's good, and then other times he disappears. What do you see with Danton Heinen? Yeah, yeah. Well, he disappears, but that that doesn't mean he's not being effective. I think that's the beauty of Dan Heinen. That's why he's been in the league as long as he has. That's why the Bruins wanted him to stay and wait around to sign a contract at the start of this season when it was feasible under the salary cap because he can do a little bit of everything. And and when he's scoring, what a what a value add. It's just the cherry on top when he's putting pucks in the net like he has over the last eight games. So He's just a really good pro. He can move up and down your lineup. And when it comes to bigger games and having to check against really good players in the Eastern Conference, he's a valuable asset. And, and I think what – so you're seeing a couple you know, reasons why you want him here and, and a reasons why he's really helpful to any organization. So we're talking to Andrew Razor Raycroft. And uh, so let's get a check on the, uh, the young fella, the young, uh, the young player that like uh, the rookie wall – uh, with Patra, right? I always feel like I always have a hard time saying it. That was it right? very impressive. I said it, Patra, right? Patra, oh, yeah. Patra. That was perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Because uh, I know he was struggling a little bit. Seemed like he kind of, I don't know how a guy like this digs himself out of a hole being so young. So how do you feel like he's dealing with the uh, life in the, in, on the, in the, at the highest level possible? Yeah, he's grinding. He's grinding, and, and I think, again, I thought he was really good last night. He had a great assist on the Heinen goal. I think he, he, he scored in Columbus, which was a big thing for a young guy to get off of that. I think it was eight in a row that he hadn't scored. So, so no, there's going to be ebbs and flows, and I think a week like last week is really hard on a young guy, right? It's really hard when you're playing every night and you're not practicing. He's not getting those extra touches where Brad Marchand doesn't need to practice as much. David Pasternak, they've been through the league. They get it. They feel it. Whereas Pacha's never gone. I, I bet he hasn't gone seven days without a practice since he started playing hockey. Um, so, so those are like the little nuance of playing in the NHL that, that make it hard on young guys. And, and I talked to him over the weekend. It's also he's playing against really big guys, really big, strong guys, and he's trying to get up to pace with that and build his strength and, and learn the leverage points. So I, what I've liked the most is, it, again, the things you can't teach, the, the desire, the competitiveness, those intangibles haven't gone away, and he's fought through, and now he's got points in his last two games. So that's, that's a big deal. He, and when he wasn't going, guys, when he wasn't playing his best, he wasn't hurting the team. And that's also a big thing when you're 19 years old. And Drew Raycroft talking Bruins with Gresham Fourier. Uh, last night, Trent Frederick stepped up to defend Brad Marchand. How necessary was that action from Trent or from uh, Trent Frederick? Excuse me. It, it, it felt necessary last night. Uh, Smith was running around. That guy only played. He played had four shifts. He played three minutes, two fifty nine last night, and he, he 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 should be suspended for hitting Brad Marchand the way he did. I mean. It was completely blatant, predatory move. Marshawn had his numbers facing him, and he, he took him into the glass. So 
that one, it, it felt like a good time for Frederick to step up. There's other hits that are clean that you don't necessarily need to jump in, but I thought it was a great response from Trent Frederick, who hung in there pretty good against a tough kid. So, so do we do we think this team is tough? Like, how would you define toughness in the National Hockey League right now? Is it just meatheads because there's no fighting? So, how do you determine whether a team is tough or not? Yeah, it's, it, well, team toughness is a thing, and, and there's no question the Bruins have that because of their compete and their mental toughness. Um, without Milan Lucic, they don't have that one guy who's going to intimidate anybody on the other side. So without without Luch, it's a little – there's not that intimidation factor, but I still think they're a tough team in general. Razor, uh, as you look around the league, I know there was the thing with Corey Perry. Hockey has worked hard to try to clean up the atmosphere, the work environment. Chicago sends Perry away. It was uh, pretty controversial – what is being said around the game? Has the game cleaned itself up? Is this just constant? I'm curious for your thoughts on that whole situation. Yeah, well, the Perry one is um, – I, I, so, yes, the game has cleaned itself up. No, I mean, again, these young guys are, are saints, essentially, compared to the, the, the old-school hockey days of all the stories about guys being out. I mean, these guys take care of themselves. They don't go out. Um, it, the Perry incident is interesting in that we don't have all the details and we don't know exactly what happened. And there's been nothing legal get in the mix. So Chicago obviously had to didn't get ahead of it early enough either. What the, the PR disaster that is. Um, so it, there's not enough out there with the Corey Perry thing. It'll be interesting to see. Can you actually terminate a guy who? made a bad decision, but maybe he wasn't illegal. Like, there's a lot of question marks around that one. But I think uh, but there's no question overall that uh, the hockey culture is, is cleaning itself up. And, and the idea that um, one or two incidences in pro sports is going to change that. I mean, you can go to any of the leagues and, and you can dig up similar stories, uh, as you guys know. Okay. Hockey night in Canada. Toronto. <laughs> oh, we go, eh? What are we thinking about that is, night in Canada? Oh, my God. <laughs> that That's, not even, That's not even. That's not even. Holzer. Was it bad? <laughs> Hold on. Can I give it a oh, try? Yours was so go ahead, bad. Go ahead. I never said I was good at it. Uh, uh, he knows what I'm talking about. Go. Uh, a Razor, you, a, a Razor, you excited to head to Toronto, eh? <laughs> uh, I am staying home this weekend. I'll oh. be watching uh, from the Nesson Studios tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this one, of course. Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, the two, this could, you know, two of the top three teams in the division, if not the conference. And it's a good test for the Bruins because, again, they played well against San Jose last night, but you want to see them get their defensive structure and game back against a real good offensive team like Toronto. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be an electric game tomorrow night. These are the ones you kind of circle on the calendar for for December that you're looking forward to. Hey, Razor, um, have, do they ever flex teams out of hockey it, night in Canada? Is that a thing? Like if, <laughs> if like, if they realize the Bruins sucked, would they be like, Oh, you're going to have to play on Sunday at one. Would they do that? No, no flexing out the Toronto Maple Leafs or the Montreal Canadians on hockey night in Canada. That does right. not happen. No matter, no matter how bad they are. Uh, those that's what you're going to get on Hockey Night in would Canada. You, would you take that as a sign of disrespect if they did flex you out of something like that? Would you Would you guys all, <laughs> universe, collectively say, like, wow, we, they must really think we suck? Absolutely. You know you know the entire National Football League is talking about how bad the Patriots are because they got flexed out of a Monday night. There's my Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. Hockey guy Every breaking single down football. player knows. See? what's going on in the league, and they are embarrassed for them. It's universal, right? Like, every pro player in any sport realizes the disrespect mm. that is pointed directly toward, uh, you know, the New England Patriots. I feel like Razor, yeah. I mean, he's br brilliant. Brilliant analysis, Razor. Thank you. I mean, I, every Patriot guy got a text last night or today say, uh, from their buddies on other teams saying, man, you guys really suck, huh? <laughs> yep. like, like, that definitely uh, happened. Well, uh, yep. it, I, it was Jabril Peppers who apparently uh, dapped up Saquon Barkley after the game, and his quote to him was, you lucky we ass. So they're already telling yeah. players. <laughs>
But yeah. I, but I'll tell you, Razor, I know that the very first team in 07 that got flexed in uh, the history of football, it's been a uh, shame city for them. He just told you. Razor just it just listen, he doesn't yeah, play football, you. but he knows the the perception. It no, it's not even a perception, it's a reality that everybody's making fun of them. Well, now. only the six Canadian well, teams play in hockey night in Canada anyway. So, what are you talking about? No, I'm kidding. And what makes it worse for the Pats is that Mahomes is on the other side, right? Any yep. of the other flex games is because there's two bad teams, so you can like pass the the the, the you know pass the baton on the who sucks more. This one is straight and Patriots. This is direct. <laughs> yeah. like, that's a great line. Pass more. the baton on who sucks more. That is great. <laughs> we got to end on that with our buddy Andrew Razor Raycroft, who is with us each and every Friday to break down the Bruins. Razor, thank you, friend, and I apologize for the bad Canadian accent. A. Eh? I do not. <laughs> I'll keep it coming. Keep it there coming. you go. Razor, thank you, buddy. There goes uh, Andrew Raycroft with us on the uh, Harbor One hotline. Interesting quote from Bill Belichick on Malik Cunningham.